Tell you what, Sean, that's fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's going on everybody? For First Week Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Russell Brand. He's known the world over for his books, his films, his stand-up comedy. And speaking of, he'll be going on a tour beginning in April. It's called Russell Brand Rebirth. Russell, welcome to the show. Thank you. What was that? Even just the concept of hot food began to hurt my mouth a bit. I think I've got an ulcer. I was going to ask you, how are you with hot food? Not good. Like, say I was having a curry, I'd have a korma, I'd have like a pasty, sort of fluid, soft You thing. wouldn't go with the vindaloo? No, I'd have like uh, something sort of like, ba I like baby food, mush. <laughs> I've only just come off the breast. Well, it's important to note we're going vegan wings today for Russell Brand. We got them from the Temple of Satan. All hail Satan <laughs> and your dark underworld kingdom. But the hot sauces are all still very much the same for better or worse. Russell, mm. you ready to get it going? Yes, please. All right, so this first one is sriracha. Sriracha is no big deal, right, even so for a baby food guy like you. This is, I'll be able to register whether or not I'm gonna have a good time because this is the bit that should be nothing. Set in the bar. Nice. Oh God. No, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> so I wanna start by talking about the tour, Rebirth, because the name would imply, you know, a new beginning, an overhaul. Yeah. In what ways do you think, for lack of a better term, you've been born again? When you have a baby, it transitions your worldview immediately. There's this new important person just moves into the house. Also, of course, there's profound, limitless love that awakens within you. It's the end of philandering. It's the end of madness. It's the end of so many things, but the beginning of so many things. It's the beginning of an other-centered life, I suppose is what it is. Like, when I think of Dad, that's someone else. Our Father, who art in heaven. Mm -hmm. that's, some, that's God or someone else. Not anymore, now it's you. I am him. So don't make a big deal out of that. For me, it's just manageable. This is in, within the realm of the pleasant. That's good. Vanilla sexual activity. At this point, <laughs> no one's got anything PVC or mm -hmm. leather out. No one's suggesting strapping you up. I know that you have a deep fondness for your favorite football team, and that's West Ham United. Though I'm sure that the uh, bare-faced greed and capitalism of professional sports. Right, might mate. Be a I bad thought Ash was going to save that for death. Like that, you're getting into it's, the paradox. It's of, kind of. It always is with Russell. I love West Ham United, but but as the sport continues to become commercialised, do I feel challenged that that allegiance is being reappropriated? Into Does it still have a pure place in your heart? When I was a West Ham fan in 1980, the problem was that West Ham United was considered to be racist violent, all those kind of things. Now, these, the sport has become commodified. The problem becomes, well, how does this relate to its indigenous roots as a sport of working class people and representative of the people of Britain? Besides hooliganism, what's the best way to channel your hatred for another club, like say Chelsea FC? The hooliganism should be taken off of the possible expression, Sean. It's through song, like stick, uh, up your ass, up your ass, stick your blue flag up your <laughs> ass from Stamford Bridge to Upton Park, stick your blue flag up your ass. That would be the way of expressing that, not through violence and hatred, but through jaunty, sweary, uh, anal-centric songs. <laughs> Have you done this with a woman? Mm-hmm. What happened? How was she? We've had four women on the show. It's overwhelmingly male. Our viewers are overwhelmingly male. But the women that we've had have performed much better than the guys on average. Because somewhere in their reservoir, they have got, I will let a baby come out of my vagina. Yeah, like a much higher pain tolerance. So I'm gonna talk about Donald Trump for a second because in addition to being a staple in your True series, you've actually had direct contact with him as he's wont to do. He called you a major loser on Twitter one time. Yeah. He did call me that. But like what happened was is he was nice to me. He had me around his tower. And he was actually, do you know what? I feel a little embarrassed because he was very sweet, generally speaking. Then he took me to his office and he goes to me, um, pick any one thing, any one thing you want from the office. And I thought, what's this Willy Wonka bullshit? He had like sort of <laughs> like, but he had good shit in there, man. Yeah. He had like Muhammad Ali's heavyweight 
built. I f- was really tempted to go, I fucking have that every way <laughs> built, mate, if you don't mind. I'd like sort of put that on and wear it and go around in Muhammad Ali's belt. But I didn't. I just took a pen so as I didn't seem needy. And you know, you have a very interesting way of unpackaging it and reacting to the election. And I can't really tell, so maybe you can clue me in. Yes. Are you optimistic about the future? Or do you feel like we've sort of put the foot on the gas pedal and now we're accelerating towards the end of days. I feel the former actually, Sean, that there's a reason to be optimism because a lot of undeclared things have become declared. For me, it seems like the end of a certain type of politics where a class of people said they would take care of another class of people and those people felt, well, this isn't working. Either things get better or they don't. And if they don't, where is there now for people that believe in nationalism? Where is there now for people that find that kind of rhetoric appealing, if indeed that is what determines determined that election result. Are we entering the realm of the challenge now? Because this has got a wolf on it, and that's quite a potent symbol, the wolf. In totemism, a wolf, it's a dangerous thing, a lone wolf. So your wolf comparison is actually a rather poetic segue into my next question. Because I'm a little disappointed that you didn't bring Bear today. Oh, that little bastard, I should have bought him. Oh, oh, he's a good boy. Would you have minded? I would have loved if he brought Bear. He's a brilliant dog, but he is no respecter of convention or order. He's a real handful, so I, could, I would have loved to have bought him because he is fun, but he does not respect boundaries. He is just pure libido, life force. Well, one of my favorite things that you share is when you serenade Bear. Seem empty and because well, I like to think that the dog understands me in a true and essential way. You know when you look at animals' eyes when you're feeling all lonely and that, and you think, this animal, it loves me no matter what. It doesn't care if I've failed or if I've let myself and the world down. This dog will love me. So I start to think, I'm going to sing songs that express this idea to the dog. He likes the great crooners very much. He's a fan of uh, Sinatra, Dean Martin. He's uniformly unjudgmental of all races and all types of uh, music. And I think uh, I will be doing some DMX tracks to oh, him. Oh, yes. Coming soon, that's what I've been. <laughs> that kind of stuff I think would, could be quite effective. Where do people start freaking out? S- zombie apocalypse. Oh, so until I get there, this is just a nice chat with a charming man who looks a bit like Justin Timberlake. Wow, I love that. I will take that to the bank. Thank you so much. And it's also on quite a meaty nugget, if I may say. Same with mine. Yeah, fair enough. I'm not saying you've got an unfair advantage except for your years of experience in the genre. <laughs> So I want to talk to you about one of my favorite videos. It was when you were on the private jet with Diddy, and he described you, I think, as his best friend, Rusty Rocket. Fortunately, that relationship has endured. Diddy and I, I've not not seen Diddy for a wee while, but I must say, I continue to be most grateful for that sort of halcyon summer where a regular part of my life was Sean Puff Daddy Coombs. But we had sort of a cast dinner for the film that we were doing. I was a respectable hour late. He was nowhere to be seen. He came around where people were like having like sort of coffee and forgetting. And then Sean Puff Daddy Coombs burst in in sort of like a sort of a cloud of his own charisma. It was magnificent. And he it instructed us that we were going to Vegas on a private jet and told me I had to organise tickets for Ricky Hatton's fight versus Manny Pacquiao. And I did have to organise tickets by ringing up Ricky Hatton, the boxer, who at that time was very nervous and preoccupied with his forthcoming boxing match with Manny Pacquiao. I said, can we get tickets? He didn't return the message. Something's happening to my consciousness. Is that the food? That's, yeah. That's it, the show. It's, it's transcendent. Happening. It's all happening. It's kicking in. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I miss drugs. With the boxing ring, you have to be very near the boxing ring, otherwise it's not good enough. I was in the, I've got tickets for the fourth row. Puffy says that's not good. We've got to get in the third row. So in the end, I think Puffy out to sort out those tickets. Then Jay-Z was there. And there was a moment in my life where I was with Jay-Z, and P. Diddy and Manny Pacquiao had just knocked out Ricky Hatton and Diddy was standing on his chair shouting and the majority of the audience were all English and I thought, my life has Uh-oh. gone unusual. To the Queen. I like it. You've never been shy about your criticisms of the media, be it the BBC or Fox News, which you called a fanatical terrorist propaganda group. What I want to do is pull up some of the biggest, most influential names in mass communication, and then you just give me the first Got thing it. that comes to your mind. Does that the sound first good? Thing, I won't give you the first thing that comes to my mind, because that's always something that nearly lands me in prison. 
Mark Zuckerberg. Now Zuckerberg, what precedes this sort of like you know um, the uh, like media barons of the 1920s? So uh, there's this unprecedented power, unprecedented responsibility. He's still a very young man. How old is he? 34, isn't right. it? That's only. I still change my voice slightly to people that are 34. Are you all right, mate? But like you know, he could like have me killed using binary. <laughs> all right. What about Rupert Murdoch? I'm trying to see the divine in everyone these days. It's all right being tolerant and loving about people that you identify with and acknowledge, but the more someone looks like a ball bag, the harder it is to see that divinity, and that's why we have to try to reach within the scrotal and to the divine within him. What about Megan Kelly? I must say I'm quite vulnerable to right-wing women that are conventionally attractive <laughs> because for me there's some sort of dovetailing of the presumed philosophical cruelty and the beauty. It sort of makes me go, God, you're so gorgeous, you're beautiful, oh God, I hate you. Would you look after me? What about Howard Stern? He's amazing, actually. He's another one. He's another one of these great media originators. He deconstructed radio while it was happening. <laughs> I've learned over the years to have that don't say something mental voice, like manageable mental. That's right. where I live in the marketplace. Howard Stern, he fucks that out the window because like he'll get you saying shit. Like you think, oh, didn't, oh no. So, I mean, it's like he's like a sort of a brilliant seducer. You just come home with your knickers in your handbag saying, I didn't mean to fuck that guy. <laughs> I feel like nervous, like it's affected me. I've fallen into the structure of the, 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 the show. I have to say this though, you look great. You're doing fine. Usually by this time, if there's somebody who comes in here, they're like, oh, I'm not good with hot food. There's a little face sweat. They're like hiccuping a little bit. You're doing great. Thank you so much. Now I eat it. Even you. I was an experienced pro. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That's quite difficult, hey? It, it'll hit your throat a little bit. The you know? throat, the actual throat. Yeah, it's, it, that's, that's challenging. You're named Shagger of the Year three times in a row by the sun. <laughs> as we've just discussed, you're now a new father. What's your prouder accomplishment as a fornicator? <laughs> <laughs> the gifts of fornication, my glorious child. <laughs> or the accolades mm -hmm. from the for, for shagging. Shagger of the year. I must, I must be honest with you, Sean, that they never verified the quality of any of that shagging or even the quantities. They never asked any of the shag partners whether they were happy with the shags, whether they were legitimate shags, whether they'd actually happened. They simply saw that I was emerging from a lot of nocturnal dwellings with numerous other humans and assumed that it was because of shagging. And I, fool that I was, desperate for approval that I continue to be, allowed this <laughs> misapprehension to continue. So I, I would say that it is the burgeoning new life and the witnessing of the emergence of consciousness and the possibility for redemption that every parent has uh, that is the greater achievement. Not to undermine the shagging, because it <laughs> was top-notch shagging that I'd done. Now we go to the... The bomb, beyond insanity. Beyond insanity? It's what beyond is beyond insanity. insanity? Possibly another form of sanity. You never know unless you, unless you go there. Okay, mate. Do I get a souvenir from doing this program? <laughs> you get a plug at the end. Thanks. <laughs> so, is it affecting you, mate? A little bit, you know? No one ever thinks about that, Russell. I do. It's not easy to interview when you're doing this thing with hot sauce all the time, you know? I know, because I can at least be spontaneous, but you've got to adhere to a structure, you've mm -hmm. got to carry this, you've got to provide morale, you're the focal point for an entire team of people. All I've got to do is just cope with the fact that my tongue, tongue feels like there's ants living on it now. So I want to talk about your YouTube series, Truths, for a second, because it seems to be filling this place in the marketplace where the real mainstream news is kind of letting its audience down. And then it's kind of crazy too because you have this global phenomenon with fake news. You have mm. the highest office peddling alternative facts. At what point is the truth just so devalued that it's not even worth searching for anymore? Never. Because what do we have other than our own essential experience of the world? But there are challenges with a concept such as the truth because I suppose there's what? 14 people in this room, each of us having a different experience. The people here in, these, in the crew have their imperatives and objectives. For all we know, one of these people heard, had their heart broken today. So even in a confined social system such as this room, there are numerous truths and numerous realities, and our job as human beings is to be 
sympathetic, empathetic and bridge building with other people's truths, not damning, condemning and maliciously and deliberately confused. So truth is more important than it has ever been. The profligacy and availability of information means that we have to be responsible with information and responsible with truth. Now what's happening to me is these sources have become, like they're affecting the level of consciousness that I'm at. I feel like it's the bit in the matrix where Neo's picking bullets out of the air. <laughs> like that, I'm looking at them and realising it's just code. Is there a leaderboard? Hmm? A leaderboard, a league table. Is mm. there a graph that I can be on? We have this uh, super fan who tweets out his power rankings. He gets really into them. What's so his name? His name's Brett Baker. Brett, I'd like to reach out to you, <laughs> presumably in America, given you're called Brett Baker. I'd like you to bear that statement in mind when judging me when I'm at the perfectly respectable level of 357 Mad Dog. <laughs> you know, like, there's a point, isn't there, where, you know, like, he's already dead. You know, mm -hmm. like, you're just punching a corpse now. So I want to talk about your show, Ponderland, for a second, because why? That was so long ago. No one knows deep. what it is. I'll tell you why, because you had a very interesting quote about your relationship with food. You said that you only want to eat food that is perfectly geometric dollops. <laughs> Do you remember that line? Perfectly geometric Who dollops. Who did your research? This is brilliant. Me and Chris. Where's Chris? Chris, raise your hand. Hello, mate. Oh, oh. Well, yes, I did say I only want to eat perfectly geometric dollops. Did you learn anything about cooking from uh, hanging out with Jamie Oliver? That I'm shit at it. I know a few proper chefs. Jamie, Tom Kerridge, he's a good UK chef. Gordon Ramsay. With them lot, it's like a kind of alchemy. Although I did make my girlfriend sausage and mash just yesterday with onion gravy and a cooked run of beans. And I put this like purple carob cabbage shit on the edge to make it look more good. <sighs> Oh no, now I've gone out the other side. There was a moment where I was high. <laughs> Do you remember that bit where I was talking about the nature of consciousness and love and all that? Mm hmm where are you at now? Now I'm at make food good. Like that, <laughs> monosyllabic grunts. All right, Russell. We have one more wing to go. Then what happens? Why are you shaking it like that? It is tradition around here to put a little extra dab of hot sauce on the last tradition? wing. Tradition? You don't have to if you don't want to, Russell. But if I don't, I look like I'm not good enough. I, well, oddly, although I present myself as quite a, a gentle fellow, I'm obviously a very competitive person. You've described yourself as a volatile person before. I'm a volatile person. Is that, what's that, that's like a pig that's, squeaks that's, noggin. That's good, that's good, that's good. Don't hurt yourself, don't hurt yourself. Yeah, this isn't about like, this is not kamikaze. Mm -mm. This is not oral jihad. This is not martyrdom of the mouth, where the only thing that matters is death. We are civilised people of the English-speaking Western world. You ready? No. Like, all my past <laughs> is coming back. Let's talk about it. Bloody thing. I didn't enjoy it the first time. So I've got to eat the bit that's got the thing <coughs> on, huh? That would be the point. <clears throat> also, this is a particularly dog-eared nugget, if I may, a wing in your lexicon. Are you enjoying the vegan Actually, wings? Actually, yes. They're pretty good, right? In the early days, back there at the other end of the smorgasbord, when it wasn't about carving my mouth up with razors of flavour, it was glorious. <sighs> Remember me, you Jesus. What do you think Brett Butler's making of all this? Brett Baker. Brett Baker, yeah. What do you think he's making of all this? Really he's gonna fucking flip out. Is he? When he sees Russell Brand talking to him directly, he's like this. Oof. Brett is like a random TV producer in Lincoln, Nebraska, who just loves hot ones and just writes these power rankings up all the time. He's gonna lose his mind. Brett Baker, da, da, da. <laughs> he's a man in Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> Brett, he's a lovely Brett Baker. Da, 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 da. He's a little list maker. Da, 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 da. He's a power rank faker. His name's Brett Baker. Brett Baker, value me. Brett Baker, can't you see? I'm drinking milk. I've been through all the hot sauces. My tongue's on fire. Brett, call me a liar, but we've been. <laughs> Strack a hot chili sauce Tabasco, elucidating thing. We've been through the wolf. 
We've tried the hot ones. We've even had ghost pepper blueberry. And can't you see, Brett Baker? We went through the apocalypse. They burnt my own two lips. And I continued on to bomb Brett Baker. It wasn't enough to blow up this British brand. Mad Dog 3.57. I stared down the barrel. I'm singing you this carol. Brett Baker, let's take it to the end. Oh, Brett, take a breath. Cause we've taken down the motherfucking mega death, Brett. Brett, that was for you. I've transcended to a world of rhyme. Everything I say now will be poetic until I eventually just shut down my consciousness. That is amazing. There's no point in asking a question because you can't go anywhere from there, Russell. You made it through. You cleared the board. Biting hot sauce. Brain on fire. Sang us a song. This camera, that camera, or that camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. I'm pregnant. Now, <laughs> I'm having a baby made out of vegan snacks and fire. He will be available in a show called Russell Brand Rebirth. It's me standing still talking. Tell you what, Sean, that's fucked me up. <laughs> Hello, mate. Hello, Russell. How's it going? Yeah, very positive. It is? Well, generally positive. What about going into this, though? Oh, well, I, not so, because, like, <laughs> like, I was explaining to my girlfriend yesterday what this was, and she goes, you're not, like, good at eating spicy food, even in the just context of normal... But this isn't a normal context, you know? Maybe you are but good in this context. But it's an extreme context. But maybe you're good in that extreme context. Say so you said, I'm not that good at fighting, even if it was just a general fight in a park. But if it was for Let's your go life. cage fighting. But if it was for your life, you'd be a better fighter, I think. All right, yeah. yeah. I suppose so raising, this, raising the stakes <laughs> can be seen as beneficial. That's what I'm saying. So but also, as expo it can be seen as expo exposing weakness. Right, that's kind of the... Sh that's, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? If you liked the video, maybe meet us halfway. Throw us a subscribe. If you didn't like the video, don't subscribe. I don't want you. I don't want you in the tent. But if you liked the video, subscribe. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. I love you. More than a friend.